Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, this is Grim, the Lord of Salt, and today we are going to be taking a quick look at Castlevania the Anniversary Collection. Now this set came out back in 2019, just as COVID was starting to impact everybody's life. And uh, it's got a great collection of games on it, and we'll break them down real quick and go through each of them. First you've got the original NES Trilogy, of course. The original Castlevania game came out on NES back in the day. Uh, it's, even though it's been remade and reimagined so many times, it's hard to imagine why one might want to go back to the original. But it is surprisingly fun and charming to go back to this retro classic and be reminded of just how old school these designs and the intentions behind them were. It's, you can't beat fighting the old school bosses like Medusa, the Mummy, Frankenstein, and the Flea Man, Yo know, Igor, and uh, of course the Grim Reaper himself before fighting a very classic version of Dracula at the top of the tower. It's surprisingly fun to play, despite its age. Si Simon's Quest, of course, came out after that and took a radical departure for what most people know. Of course, it was really taking after more uh, Vampire Killer, which was developed for the MSX2 and for some reason not included in this set. But even though Simon's Quest was quite different back in the day and still a little rough around the edges, it did lay the groundwork for future titles like Symphony of the Night and many other titles featured in the collections I'll be talking about in subsequent videos. At the time, it didn't do very well in the sales market, and because of that, uh, Konami decided to switch pace back to focusing more on how the original game played out, and as such, Dracula's Curse came out. Very much an expansion on the concept of the original, just with more stages, more enemies, more playable characters, more endings, and more difficulty. Much, much more difficulty. And ultimately, this is what also led to Castlevania 3's sales not being so good at the time, was because a lot of people felt it was just plain too hard. Which is why we got the next game, Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo. Now, despite its name, this game is not a follow-up to the original series. Rather, it's another reimagining of the first game, more or less. More of the concept than the actual architecture of it. Very much Super Castlevania is a new game. New levels, new enemies, new bosses, and new soundtrack. Very much new gameplay as well. In addition to having larger sprites, with more animations all around, taking full advantage of the Super Nintendo's Mode 7 graphics. The game also featured omnidirectional whipping, which is something that's still a first and only in this series, making this game stand out from your typical Castlevania rather significantly. Even though it's more accessible in general, it still ramps up the difficulty quite a bit, especially towards the end, so it's still very much a challenging game in the classic Castlevania style. Now, in addition to all these games, we get two games for the Game Boy Advance, Castlevania The Adventure and its sequel, Belmont's Revenge. Now, these games are very punishing. They are also limited by the hardware they're developed for. Obviously, they're in black and white. Uh, they're missing a lot of features from the main titles. But otherwise, they feature entirely new content here. There's new enemies, new areas, new themes. And they're also very short. So even though they're incredibly difficult, especially at certain points, uh, they're very slow, very stiff, even compared to the NES games, but they still have a unique quality of their own, and because they're so short, it's kind of hard not to at least give them a shot. That said, you probably won't be spending too much time with them. The last major title on this list, of course, is Castlevania Bloodlines, the kind of a side game developed for the Genesis a few years after Castlevania IV came out. This game takes very much its own style and personality to itself, although it still uses the very classic old-school Castlevania formula, which especially fans of Super Castlevania will be turned off of the lack of omnidirectional whipping. But in place of that, we've got two playable characters with very different playstyles, and each has their own ending. Uh, there's a whole new set of areas to play through, with all new bosses and enemies to encounter along the way. It serves as the backdrop of having World War I currently going on, as well as serving as a sequel to Bram Stoker's original novel, so it has ties to that as well. It's a very interesting game, very fun to play, and once again, like the Super Castlevania, at the, at the beginning it's very accessible, but towards the end it really ramps things up. And there's one more game that's included with the set that's basically just an extra, and that would be Kid Dracula. This NES game came out back in the day. Konami was known once upon a time for also making parody titles of their more established franchises. And this is one example of such. In this game, Dracula's son gets up and is going after well, his rival, a demon who's been giving him trouble. And uh, he goes on a bit of a little adventure here, shooting fireballs at various enemies. And it's uh, got a very unique tone to it, 
very different style of gameplay, but it does have a lot of uh, cues from the Castlevania series. This would essentially be considered non-canon for all time, but it was also stated that this was officially Alucard in this game, who was a playable character from Castlevania 3 and Symphony of the Night. So even though it's, it didn't officially happen, the, the main villain does appear in Symphony of the Night, so he probably did actually exist. So it was probably something that happened, you know, maybe in a dream, or just uh, Alucard as a young boy playing with his imagination. But regardless, uh, that's the last entry worth talking about here. Uh, very different kind of game, but fun to play. All the games feature different options available here. There's display options for different ratios, for different filters, and such as the scan line filter, which is popular with a lot of people. Pixel Perfect might be popular for others. There's also different backgrounds you can choose to have fill in the rest of the screen space, which is a nice option. Uh, and it has an art book in it as well. It has a lot of information on all the games included, uh, a lot of background information, and even some, some artwork that's uh, detailing uh, pre-release stuff that was developed for the game, for the various games. Now, some more features were patched into this game later. Uh, one such feature was the ability to alter the controls. A lot of these games, if you know, you've been playing it on modern systems, modern Castlevania is usually the bottom button, it's A for Xbox, or X for PlayStation, is jump, whereas the square button for PlayStation, and the X button for Xbox, is the attack button. For some reason, most of these games had those switched around, so we had, we were given the option to change it back, which is very nice, it was something people complained about, and the developers did actually go ahead and bother to patch that in. The other thing they gave us as an entirely bonus is the Japanese version for most of the games, which meant playing them uncensored and unaltered. Now, a lot of these games were changed in their international release to make them even more difficult than they originally were, which is contrary to how video games usually get imported from Japan, but it is the case. So if you're having trouble playing these classic Castlevanias, especially the original NES games, uh, you can try playing the Japanese versions as they are notably easier. And it can help ease you into and practice you in so that you can take on the US versions later. So that wraps up this set. It's a very good set. It's not a full price set, so it's cheap. Uh, you can probably get it on sale various times. As is making this video, it's on sale. So it's highly recommended for anybody who is interested in getting into the Castlevania uh, collections and interested in trying out these old school Castlevania games. Highly recommended. Lots of fun. Till next time, this is Grim saying stay salty.